Okay, my regiment is coming along nicely. What slot to fill next, though? Talking out the field today. Hi, what's your name? Bob Bob Fibber. Bob, what do you do? I'm in artillery. Thank you, Bob. Is we play anything for you? Anything. Just play it loud, okay? All right, artillery it is. The Station Forge heavy mortar is pretty good, but I didn't dig the exoskeleton stuff, or more importantly, the weird little radar dishes mounted on them. They're a little too Fantastic Voyage, which is an awesome movie, I still watch it, but it's not really my Krieg aesthetic. So I continued looking around. I came across this free one that was rather impressive. I like the addition of the sandbags, but the base is compulsory, and that's a lot of resin. I pondered lowering it in lychee so that it's below the plane of the vat to cut it off, but that's effort and might not work, so I continued looking. And then I came across this beauty by Redmaker. Very nice. I like the guy yanking the cable to fire it, like with a real heavy mortar. But, you know, Warhammer 40k being, well, Warhammer 40k and Krieg being, well, Krieg, we gotta go really heavy. And where these real guys need a machine to load the mortar, of course, the Death Corps just grab the massive artillery round, hoist it onto their shoulder, and jam it in to pound the enemies of the Imperium. Okay. So I snagged the files, ran them through lychee, and chucked them into the printer. Once they came out, chucked down some paper towels, snap on some gloves, get the excess resin off the top of the build plate with the plastic scraper, because resin is expensive and... But I'm a real tightwad. Can I afford this remarkable system? Removed the build plate and I grabbed the metal scraper to dig in and get the models off. Then, just to check there has been no buildup or residue in the vat, I gently ran the plastic scraper around to check. Nothing? Cool. Onwards. It has been suggested that I should use my fingers because using the scraper causes wear and tear on the vat, but I'm not leaning into it particularly heavy, just dancing it across, and I did try using my gloved fingers, but that still missed some bits. My fingertips just ain't that dainty, I guess. Then get everything into the alcohol and agitate and plunge to clean them up and get the slime off. After extracting and leaving to dry for a little bit, into warm water they go, and they detached very nicely from the supports, and there's not much in the way of cleanup afterwards. So I had a little play to get familiar with the model and get my surroundings. Grabbing the superglue, I added the wheels to the left and right bases. That was another thing that drew me to this model, the wheels. Nice and super chunky, and they look totally World War I style. The pads were as far as I have been able to discern to distribute load because otherwise the wheels tended to sink into the mud and soft soil. Cool! That's what I like about making these little vids. I end up doing some research and finding out nifty little things like that. Then adding the breech mechanism to the barrel. The first one I'm creating in an open position, the other will be closed. And then the wheels glued into position on either side and these are stabilized with a little rectangular plate that fits into the grooves beneath the breaching mechanism. And then the little wheel for the elevating mechanism. And then it was basically just assembled a dude yanking on the firing cable, then off to the hiking boot box for a blast of Chaos Black Primer all over. Afterwards, a nice base coat of Abaddon Black, and then breaking out the Iron Hand steel base to give the whole thing a decent dry brush, catching all the edges and corners, the textures, all the fun stuff, the tracks, the chains, the bits, the bobs. On to the crew, a nice dry brush of Thunderhawk blue layer to catch the wrinkles in the uniforms, the boots, the sleeves, and the gloves. A lighter dry brush of Dawnstone layer on the same areas to give a nice highlight to the ripples of the uniforms, their tunics and belts and such. Now, breaking out the Iron Hand steel base again to give a dry brush across their helmets and gas masks. Okay. Corn red base on the pauldrons, and then once this was dry, a wash of Karoberg crimson. And then on to the accessories. I printed up some of the boxes and lids and started adding shells to fill them up. One of them I glued the lid slightly ajar so it's freshly opened. 
Another I left fully open with a shell already used and the loader's rifle perched across the top while he ferries shells to the weapon. I glued these two variants atop a closed box and then gave them a layer of Abaddon Black and a dry brush of the Iron Hand Steel. The crew get a squirt of Elmers across the base and a sprinkle of sand and an army painter swamp tuft. I glued the guy yanking the cable into place. The cable attaches nicely, but I wanted a little more stability, so where his foot can bump against the mortar, I glued him there as well. And then the Cadian flesh tone dry brush to the boots and hammer the coats of the crew, some of it on their gloves, and then on the wheels and lower areas of the mortars, and around the lowest areas of the ammunition crates. And then a blast of Krylon varnish from all directions to seal everything in. So, here we have my two heavy mortars, crewed by the Death Corps of Krieg, dedicated to raining down endless volleys of devastation, death, destruction and doom on the enemies of the Imperium. A spotter giving commands to fire, the loader ferrying explosive mayhem to the ever-hungry mortars, and the gunner ready to pull the trigger and deliver havoc to the foe for the Emperor.